I learned this concept many years ago. Don't ask me when, because then I have to tell you my age. The concept I learned is simple. The first attraction you have is a spiritual attraction. Then a physical attraction occurs. If you don't believe me, test the theory. But most people think that the first attraction they have to a man or a woman is physical. It's not. Something about that person, apart from the pheromones and the hormones, is pulling you to that person. It's almost like a psychic connection. It's something that is outside of yourself and something that compels you. It's almost like a vampire, right? Enticing you and pulling you towards something, towards the person's beauty, towards the person's appearance or you know, just something that tells you, look over there or turn your head and then it's like magical. But it is indeed still a spiritual occurrence because energy attracts energy. That person's energy is pulling your energy to them or vice versa. Today, I want to talk about how the law of attraction really affects our decisions and how for those of us who are unaware of that, we can be trapped by it. What we want is not always what's good for us. What we want is not always what we need, especially in relationships, right? A lot of times we see something we want and we, we just have to have it. How many of us, um, you know, including myself, you saw something you wanted and you believe that that person or that thing is what you needed, what you must absolutely have. And you put in all the effort, more effort than you ever put in in school <laughs> or schoolwork or anything to get the object of your admiration. How many of you have done that? And then years later, 20 years later, or five years later, let's go a little closer, you are sitting across from the object or you're holding the object and you realize, man, if I had known then what I know now, I would never have gone the extra mile. I would never have done everything I did to possess this thing that I thought I absolutely had to have, or even worse, that I thought was meant for me. Yeah, all of us have made that mistake, me included. All of us have thought that we that what we were doing or the person that we are with is absolutely the person that we were meant to be with or the thing we bought was supposed to be the thing we were supposed to have. And then, yeah, disappointment. Disappointment, disillusionment, you know, even disgust at ourselves because we didn't recognize sooner the red flags. And we have a lot of red flags. It's almost like sometimes you're walking across a mine and you see the mines, but you pretend you don't see the mines because all you're focused on is the end goal. That thing that captivated you, that thing that captured your attention in the first place. I know I've done it. And I'm certain you have too, even if you're sitting here pretending you did not. But what am I talking about here? Am I talking just about the, the fact that you're attracted to something that you wanted and then it turned out not to be something that you wanted at all or needed? Because needing something is different than wanting something. It's a concept that as children, you know, all of us were not taught, but it's the truth. Needing something is not the same as wanting or craving or desiring that thing. The red flags are significant. Identifying red flags, recognizing red flags is not the same as saying, you know what? If this thing is showing me all these red flags, I need to back away. For some people, red flags are an indication to get closer. <laughs> it's like a stoplight. Yeah, you see a stoplight, you stop. But in relationships, red flags are like things where you're like, okay, this person's a liar. Uh, maybe they're just lying this once. Yeah, they lie but maybe they're lying for a good reason. No, if they're a liar, they're a liar. Don't, don't push any further, don't go any further. Do not proceed any further, but that's not human nature. Human nature looks past us the flaws that are, that are showcased and human nature says, you know what? I can, I can actually overlook what I'm seeing or I can overcompensate for what this person is lacking. Don't do it. If you do it, you're gonna live in regret. If you do it, you're gonna deplete your own source because you have to give so much to compensate for the thing that is lacking in the other person or thing, okay? Um, most of us don't realize this law of attraction thing is really significant. 
one of the things, the other things I recognize, apart from the law of attraction, that the first thing you recognize is a spiritual thing, is that we are all mirrors. When we look at people, especially if we are not self-aware, especially if we are not consciously aware or spiritually in tune, what we see reflected in others is normally what we would like to reflect in ourselves. And that is dangerous. You are approaching this person from the perspective that you, what you see in them, even if it's one thing, because most of us latch onto one thing in people. Do you ever realize that? It's not that you go down a checklist and say, well, this person has this and this and this, which you should, by the way. I, I ask all my clients, most of them, to do a checklist of what they want in a person. At least 10 things of what you want in the person that you're trying to attract. Because if you know what you're trying to attract, then that minimizes the law of attraction. And then you can totally cut through the bull stuff and just get right to, you know, right to the chase. But most of us, what we attract in others are, is what pretty much we want in ourselves. Like for example, how many times you have an introvert and an extrovert? What is that introvert doing when they look at that person who's laughing and the fun of the party and the cheerleader and the jock? What they're thinking is this person has something that they want. That person is a reflection of what they feel they can't possess themselves. So they're attracted to the person because they're trying to get what that person has and what they think they need. So they put this person on as an addition. You marry this person because they have some quality that you lack. You marry this person because you know what? This person is gonna make you look good because you can't be an extrovert, but this person brings you along with them. So you're actually tying yourself into the energy and trying to feed into that energy to complete yourself. That's dangerous because eventually what you will realize is that's that person's gift. It's not your gift to have. You still have to work out the issues that you have. You still have to become what you chose not to do the work in. You can't work through someone else's, you know, benefit or whatever they have. You have to work out your own things in order to become the person you need to become. So being attracted to someone because they have qualities that you lack is the first no-no. The second no-no is looking at that person and you're in a relationship with that person. And the person might very well be a great person. They may be an awesome person. But what we do as individuals is that we project a lot. You hear that word projection? And what we project is what we are lacking onto the other person. Many of us marry or get into relationships because we want that person to make us happy. We want that person to complete us. There's no such thing. Another person cannot complete you. What they can do is add to what you already possess or they can bring their own essence to the table. But you should not engage in a relationship just because you think the other person can give you something that you lacked in yourself. How can, some how can someone else make you happy if you are unhappy? If you are unhappy, it's something that you need to work out in yourself instead of looking towards the other person to make you happy. The other thing that we do is we get into these relationships where the law of attraction again, and you know, one year into the relationship is the honeymoon phase. Everybody knows what the honeymoon phase is. You're happy, you're smiley, you're your best self. You know, the bathroom, the toilet seat is put down every time you use it. The toilet paper is on the wrong side or the right side of the other person. Like you're trying to overcompensate and please that person and, and keep the allure going that this person will want to be with you. Once the honeymoon phase is over, what happens? What happens is that you start to see characteristics in the other person that you may not like, may not agree with, or you just totally don't want to deal with. But how do you get past that? Do you, most people stay married? Most people try to work it out. But the issue that happens or the issue that develops in trying to work it out is that most people don't have patience. And one of the things that you need to do with the law of attraction is recognize that love is patient. It says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is first and foremost patient. And relationships, most people do not possess patience. And what is the patience about? What's, what patience is required in relationships? The patience that is required in relationships is that you need to recognize, you need to be honest with yourself. Remember, I'm always talking about truth. You need to be honest with yourself and recognize that the person you're with 
is not the, the same person as you. This person has their own characteristics, their own behaviors, their own experiences. They may have come from a totally different background than yours. So patience is required because it's gonna take time to understand each other. It's gonna take time to understand that person with all their kinks and all their behaviors and all their weird, weird ways and stuff like that. But most of us don't have patience for that because we marry or we are attracted to an ideal. We are attracted to a vision. We are attracted to something that really doesn't exist. It's, few, it's very few people that understand this concept that the person that you're, that, you're, that you're with and the problems that you're having are natural. You are not the same people. So therefore you have to get to know one another. You need to take the time to get to know one another. But most of us don't have that time because most of us lack patience. Relationships are about being patient. If you are impatient with the person that you got with, or if you're impatient within yourself, you're never going to get to the next level. And the next level should be understanding. Understanding each other, understanding each other's differences, understanding each other's similarities. Understand is a requirement for a healthy relationship. Try this. Patience equals time. Time equals happiness. And happiness means that you are at peace with yourself. Give the other person the chance. Realize that what you, what you projected outside yourself, the idealisms that you brought to the table, all that stuff will change. It will change with age. It will change with growth. It will change as a relationship changes. Relationships go through so many different transitions. But what is required in the midst of these transitions is not frustration is not a lack of patience, but instead love, because love overcomes everything. My name is Ingrid Felton. As always, thank you for coming by my YouTube channel today. Please share my videos with others. I hope that you find some gold nugget as always in what I say. I know that relationships are not easy. I, may, I know that the place you are right now is not a good place, or it may be a challenging place, but challenges don't mean that you have to give up. Challenges sometimes mean that you have to do work on yourself in trying to, instead of trying to work on the other person. And that's a great error that a lot of people make. So today, practice peace, practice love. Um, continue to subscribe to my videos, continue to tell others what I'm doing here, like the videos, leave your comments. And again, thank you. Bye.